Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. I'm sorry about yesterday's video. My SD card was corrupt. I couldn't get the footage, but I'm excited to be filming today. I got a new SD card in the camera, and I'm waking up a little bit later than normal. It's around 7.12, only because I stayed up a little bit later to watch the women's semifinals. Sadly, Serena didn't win. I'm really bummed about it. Uh, I, she was outplayed, simple as that. Um, but, I mean, making it to the semifinals, being one of the best ones still standing is pretty incredible. Her press conference, I don't know if any of you saw it, it was really sad. Um, she broke down in it and you could just see like, she's given her whole life to this. And it's really amazing to see what she's accomplished and I think Anytime she doesn't win, it makes bigger news than when she does win. And I couldn't imagine going through life with that pressure, but she did her best. She was outplayed. Um, all the best to Osaka. And also Jen Brady, an American who is in the fi her first Grand Slam final. So, yeah, I slept in a little bit to recover from watching some tennis. My hair is doing a weird thing, I think, from the way I slept. But it is... Thursday, I'm not sure what we're going to get into, but I have breakfast on the way because it didn't feel like making my own. So breakfast and coffee coming from my favorite little place. Steven is at work, Bubba's is here, and we're gonna see what we can get into today. Do you agree, Bubby? We'll see what we get into today? Yes, we do, we see, you see what we get into. What do you wanna do? What do you want to do today? Oh, you look extra great today, you old man. Over on Instagram, I also asked for some Q&As. And one question everyone asked is if we would get another rescue dog. For those who don't know, Bubba's is a rescue. We've had him now for, oh, he's 13 years old. But we had him DNA tested when we first got him and he's actually a first generation Labradoodle and he is the best dog on the whole planet. Azu is the best boy. Who's the best boy? Who's the old boy but the best boy? We love him. Like, he's our whole world. So breakfast should be here shortly and then after I eat that, we're gonna get this day rocking and rolling. Also, my sweatshirt says, check in with your friends. Please do so, make sure they're fine. And all my friends in Texas, I know that you guys are not equipped to deal with the weather you're getting. Stay safe, stay warm. Um, I'm praying for all of you. So my breakfast is here. I got eggs with avocado and arugula and a little bit of bacon. My coffee is in the microwave. I'm just making sure it's heated up. Also, you can't have any of this without Tabasco sauce because I feel like eggs are just a vessel for hot sauce. Yes, I'm really putting that much on. All right, give my coffee a stir. Eat some breakfast, and then we'll get this day rocking and rolling, won't we? We are in the car, and I want to go to an antique shop today to see if I can find some vintage prints. I have been looking everywhere for some. I really love the whole look. So there's an antique mall that's about 10 minutes away from my house. They open at 10 o'clock. So we are going to head there and see what we can find. I also am finally shifting back into my wallet. So I use this zippy organizer from Louis Vuitton. I believe they still make it, although the name may have changed. I have had this thing for years. I mean, ooh, probably, I don't know. I love a big wallet. But what I have been using during the pandemic, which is still going on, by the way, wear your mask, wash your hands, all the things, I have really just been carrying my Louis Vuitton clay and my sanitizer 
but like I miss my big wallet. It's time to bring it back. Um, I'm like always digging through that clay. I can't see what I'm grabbing, so it was time. Also, the heat is on auto and it's like full blasting right now because it is very cold. I think it's 15 degrees currently. So like I said, we're going to run to this antique store. It's a couple minutes away and really the only thing I'm looking for are vintage prints. The other thing that I'm really struggling with is my dining room table. I don't know what I want it to look like or what I want the centerpiece to be. I really think I just want like a vase with branches of some kind in it. I'm just, I'm just not sure where I want to land. So I might see what I can find at this antique store. If I can't find anything there, I'm really thinking of maybe heading over to Pottery Barn because I have a birthday gift certificate from them. And there is this one really pretty black vase that I've seen that I'm considering a possibility. I just need to see the actual scale in person. So that's what I'm doing on this Thursday. There were a couple questions that I thought I would answer while we were going because I did a little Q&A over on Instagram. If you're not following me there, please do. Um, for 2021, I'm really taking a lot more content over there. Even if I don't post here, there are DIYs happening there. They're always saved to my highlights and I really go step by step. One thing that's really challenging about YouTube and a DIY is it takes you two to three times longer to complete anything. I do find though on Instagram, it's much easier just to grab your phone and record something. So I think that's like really helpful context. I think a lot of people don't realize how much longer it takes to film like a DIY for YouTube versus Instagram. And I think that's why you see so many more DIYs easily saved over to Instagram just because it is far, far easier. But I do a lot of things over there. So make sure you're following me because you don't wanna miss out. And I save everything. I also do recipes over there. And yeah, it's just easy to highlight it step by step. One that was asked a bunch of times was, where will Steven and I be traveling next? And where is our favorite place that we have traveled? I would have to say that probably my favorite trip still to this day has been Portugal. We spent time in Lisbon, but spent a lot of time in a little village in, called Estremoz. It was wonderful, relaxing, recharging. It was the tiniest village. Like there was no shopping, there was nothing. There was one restaurant we went to every single night. Uh, and the waitress got to know us and they treated us so lovely. There is one little bakery. I met a woman there named Lordish and had like beautiful conversation with her. It was just a magical trip and so simple. It's still one of my favorites. Where are we traveling next? Steven and I were supposed to be in Austria for Christmas. If you have been following a while, you know that we like to travel every once in a while for Christmas, just to get away from everything, experience a holiday somewhere else. We were supposed to go to Austria. However, with everything, we clearly had to cancel. Steven and I don't know when our next trip will be. We have nothing scheduled or nothing planned right now. I guess we'll see where it takes us. Speaking of traveling, people ask like, as far as retirement, how have we planned? Where do we want to end up? All of those things. Steven and I are well planned for retirement and really thinking about where we want to end up permanently. And I would say it's probably out West. Uh, Arizona is a place that we have fallen in love with. It's a place we love to travel to. I could see us ending up there somewhere a little bit, well, a lot warmer, but that's in the future. We'll see what the future holds for us. And I just think that's a that's an end goal. We have lots of years left before uh, <laughs> retirement, but I could see us definitely wanting to land there. All right, friends, we are almost at the antique store and I'm going to hop off here. Keep your fingers crossed that I find some vintage, amazing prints. That's what I really want. And I will catch up with you all a little later. So that was a really successful trip and I found four pieces of art, some are photography, some are paintings, 
but really, really happy with what I found. I also found an old crock. They didn't have anything that inspired me for the center of my dining room table. So I am going to check out Pottery Barn but I had a really interesting run-in. So as I was there, I saw a lady trying to like move a desk, an older woman, and I hurried up and like I set everything that I had down and I just helped her move it. And she was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. I was like, well, you don't need to thank me, I'm just helping you. And then oddly enough, one of the paintings, actually it's a photograph that is then hand colored because it's back when photographs were only black and white. And I ended up picking it out and here it was her booth and she ran up uh, as I was cashing out and it was a $75 piece of art and she's like I want him to have it for $20 um, just because I did a good deed which absolutely there is no need for that but it just shows you like how an act of kindness comes back to you and I literally would not have not helped her move it. But it was just a beautiful moment. And then she told me all about the art that I bought and the guy that I bought it from showed me things on her phone. Her name was Donna. We had like the most beautiful conversation. And she was like, anytime you come back and find anything in this booth. And like, she was, it was just a really great interaction. And it just reminds you of like, how important it is to just be nice and kind and how it always does come back to you in some big or small way. And it was just a really great moment. I had so much fun. I actually spent like an hour and a half there, friends. It's 11.30 now and I got there at like 10.03. I just wandered and listened to the music that they were playing and enjoyed myself. And it was really a nice day or morning. So now I do think I'm going to hop over to Pottery Barn. I'm not too far away from home, a couple minutes and to see if I can find anything. I think I want like a large vase with branches in it. I'm not particularly tied to anything, but I know I wanna use this certificate that I have. And then we'll get home, we'll make some lunch, I'm gonna get a workout in, and then I have dinner plans, which we are making a vegan uh, fettuccine Alfredo type thing with some oat milk, and we'll see how that turns out. <laughs> I. Although it's vegan, I might grill up some chicken breasts <laughs> to add with it. We'll see. But just a really nice, calming, relaxing day. And yeah, can't complain. Well, this has turned into like a full day. So I ended up going to Pottery Barn. It's now 12.30 in the afternoon. I thought I'd show you a couple of things that I picked up. So one thing that I picked up was this old typing drawer. I just thought it was so pretty. It needs to be wire brushed a little bit more and emptied out, but I thought this could look really cool on a wall. Then what I really went for is some art and I found some. I'm really excited about some of the pieces. And then I also thought I'd show you one thing that I purchased just because I absolutely loved this color. It was $4 was like this little foil maybe dispenser. I don't know. I just really bought it mostly for the color. And then I also loved this bean crock. I got this for like 10 bucks. Then I'll show you the art that I ended up getting. She went ahead and wrapped each one. So I got this. Uh, like botanical painting. I have to tack a couple things in the back. It's so old. Maybe just tighten up those nails a little bit. So this is an oil on board painting that I really just love the color and I love the frame. Thought it was beautiful. This one was just like a very cool architectural photograph that I saw and I loved. And then this one is the one that Donna gave me a huge discount on. I love that the glass is actually out of this one. So this is the Wallace Nutting photograph that Donna ended up giving to me. Now this one doesn't have its glass, but that's what actually drew me to it. I love the fact that like that photograph is like lifting a little 
and is a little torn here. Like I said, this is back when photographs were black and white, and then he would have people go in and paint colors onto the photographs. I just think it's super cool and super beautiful. So we're gonna play with these. I don't know exactly where everything will end up. And then I did swing by Pottery Barn because I'm looking for something for the dining room table. I found this vase. It looks much smaller right now, but I actually really like it. And then they also had these really beautiful sprigs. Um, I don't know how I feel yet. I think I like it. I do think I need to play around a little bit, arrange some things, but ultimately I think it'll work. Actually, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I have to live with it for a little bit. I'm wondering. It might just be the amount of sprigs in there. Let me thin this out and see how I feel. All right, I'm playing with it. I think I like it. I don't know, I think I just have to live with it for a little bit. I'm not sure I'm sold on the color. I just have to live with it for a little bit. I don't hate it, I just don't know if I love it. Oh, I don't know. All right, I am going to make some lunch and then maybe we'll play with some styling around the house. I'm really excited to add some of these antique pieces to the house. So I've been restyling a couple things. This is our powder room that we had updated during Vlogmas, but I added that crock to this shelf and one of our tiles from when we were traveling. Then I had this wood vase from the Studio McGee collection through some pompous grass that I had harvested over Christmas and I really like it. I always try to have something high, and then I like to kind of work my way down. I don't like a ton of symmetry. I like it to feel a little off balance, but I really like that this is so high, but a cluster of objects here to kind of like balance out the weight of it. And then here I did add that one painting. I love the idea of bringing this very old painting into a much more updated space. I just love that juxtaposition of the two. So that's where this one landed. You'll see that I have a bunch of art here. And then I ended up putting that little like oil jug, whatever it is, right here. I really like pulling in that color over in this section of the kitchen. I have like vintage trays. A lot of people ask, about a lot of my accessories, I think you'll be shocked at how many things, like if we look in this space, all three of those, all well, this is vintage, all of that, that vintage wall pocket. This is something I found at Goodwill. It was a mess inside and I just spray painted it matte black, but that is old. Well, that's old, clearly all those. That tray over there, I have like, antique bowls up here that I found at an antique store a long time ago. I have this piece here. Like so many of my things are actually antique or vintage or old. That typing drawer I ended up putting here and I love that it helps tie together a bunch of different wood tones in the house. So it kind of ties in that piece there. The buffet and the island. I just cleaned it up a little bit and hung it. Really, really happy with it. Then over in this space, I had this vintage print that I didn't know where to put. And I kind of like it there on those shelves. Once again, just balancing out. And I also love that there's a modern piece of art at the top. This is growing on me the more I walk back and forth and see it from like a distance or in the space, it is growing on me. I really kind of like it, I think. I am debating if I wanna paint it a darker color, but right now I'm gonna leave it. Then over here, I added that vintage 
architectural photograph that I picked up today at the antique store. And just have like a bunch of like little vintage, like I love when I find these little porcelain dogs, this little tray, but I love that mix of old and new. And then with that photograph print, I just kind of layered it on the fireplace. I love pictures in non-traditional places, so I love the idea of not hanging them all on walls and leaning them up into spaces. I think it just adds a really nice layer. Really happy with those pieces and how they fit into the space. Yeah, I'm really happy with it. Ignore my hat hair. I had my hat on almost all day today, <laughs> even while I was here in the house. I screenshotted a couple of the Q&As over on Instagram. I'm going to answer some here. I'm gonna answer some tomorrow's video. There were a lot, so I will not possibly get to all of them. But I thought I'd just go through the ones that I grabbed quickly this afternoon. You said your mom and dad live in Ohio. Are you originally from there? No, I'm not originally from Ohio. I grew up in rural Western Pennsylvania, Somerset County. And then we moved to Washington, Pennsylvania around my junior, senior year of high school. And then we moved to West Virginia. Um, that's where I went to college. And then they moved to Ohio, but I only really lived in Ohio for like a year and then I moved to North Carolina on my own. What motivates you? <laughs> I feel like there's not a lot. I feel like that's an area of my life right now that's a little bit lacking um, is some motivation, specifically more around self-care than anything. However, I think, um, yeah, I probably should not be the one answering that right now. I think what motivates me, yeah, <laughs> not going to answer. That's sad that I really don't know how to answer that. What other room renovations do you want to tackle this year? I love your new pantry. Uh, some of you have been saying we shouldn't call it a pantry, that it's too nice to be called a pantry. I was like, the food room? I don't know what to call it. I'm really happy with it. It makes my heart happy every time I walk in. But uh, other renovations that I'm thinking about, it, well, I wanna convert that really large closet to our Peloton room. There's some like decluttering and donating that I have to do. We have like a big donation truck coming in March. So I'm gonna have to round up a lot of things that I wanna donate. Old coats and shoes and house decor stuff that is not being used. And even a couple pieces of small furniture. So I want to convert that Peloton room. I have the vision for it. I know exactly what I want it to look like. And I'm excited for that. I'm trying to think if there's any other... I don't know. There's probably not a big project again for a while after the Peloton room. What has living through these such strange times taught you about yourself? I think I already knew this, but I think I've learned it on a much bigger scale that I'm my happiest at home. I love being in my house, making our space beautiful. I love that it's a space and a place that we love to be in. And I'm so grateful for really small things. Uh, yeah, I think it's really taught me like, I'm happiest when things are very simple, which I think is true for so many of us. Do you have a basement? I've never seen it in any of your videos. Steven and I actually started meeting with people to finish our basement. Our basement is simply storage and Steven's workbench. We do have an older couch down there and a TV for like working out. Like it's a nice space because it's a newer house, but it's not finished yet. And we debated, we met with people and then the guy kind of ghosted us <laughs> and never got back to us about anything. And then Steven and I realized that like this house is already quite large and like an additional space doesn't make a lot of sense to us. And that's where my old Peloton used to be. And I just didn't love going down there, mostly because it is not finished, but I, we just see no need in doing that because it's two of us. I think if we had a family or guests all the time, we'd feel a lot differently about it, but we, we don't. Do you and Steven disagree about decor? Steven really doesn't care. 
he cares the most, apparently. Steven really, I think this style that we're kind of at, which I don't even know what it is anymore, uh, I think he likes it the most, and he's just not picky. I think at when I'm done with something, he's always like, this looks so good, or you were so right in doing that. He is so easy to please that I don't think he gets really riled up, and he kind of lets me try anything. But if he doesn't like something, he'll definitely let me know. But for the most part, he's like, pretty easy going. Where do you find the will to be so positive all the time? I'm not. I, you guys see a glimpse of me. I think I'm always trying to be positive, but I, I deal with a lot of anxiety, a lot of, um, like, like, and I'm not just talking about like everyday anxiety, like an anxiety disorder. I definitely am challenged by that. I also feel like it's been extremely exasperated over the last couple months. And I have felt really overwhelmed a lot, but I also have to continuously remind myself of how lucky I am and that um, the things that I get worked up about are typically self-created and narratives in my head that I have no evidence to support. And I think it's easy to intellectually understand that, but when you're in it, it's really hard to unpack that feeling. Uh, I find that I take on emotions and feelings of other people a lot, whether I work for them, their friends, anything like that. So when other people are elevated and anxious, it makes me even more so. And, and let's face it, during these times, everyone is pretty escalated and at a pretty high temperature. So I feel like not only have I dealt with my own anxiety, but also like then shouldering other people's or trying to absorb other people's. It's been a lot. So I think I've, I've struggled the most with mental health over the last probably particularly three to four months. But uh, I, I do the best I can to navigate it and manage it. And yeah, just always try to remind myself how grateful I am and try to keep myself rooted in that. And one thing that I've really been thinking about a lot is joy is the best act of resistance. And I think it's so easy to miss out on joyful moments and big and little wins when you're overwhelmed. So I'm really trying to step back and really think about like, what was my win today? Because without thinking about it, you don't think there were any, and there are probably a handful to be celebrated. Not a question, but you need your own home line. Your taste is impeccable. That would be a dream come true of like having an opportunity to have a line of something or be able to do decor and homes like as a full-time job, that would be kind of an amazing opportunity that I think would bring me a lot of joy. Someone said like, what would your dream job be? I'm content in my job, but I think like a dream job would be to be creative and to create spaces for other people that fill their hearts and their souls. Uh, I think spaces have the possibility to do that and to make people fall in love with that and in love with their spaces, I think would be a dream because it would like kind of embody the idea of like the creativity and the putting together and that piece that I enjoy so much, but also this like extreme act of kindness and like warmth that you get to bring to someone. I think that would be like a perfect marriage of things that I love. Last year you worked on a flower garden. Will you be willing to show us how to create one? Yes, I plan on doing a lot of little gardening videos. I'm by no means an expert, but if you guys have been following last year, I did um, a cut flower garden and it did really well for me. You guys got to see on Instagram and in some of the videos, like I made some beautiful bouquets of things that I grew and I really enjoyed it. So I'm looking forward to like getting back in the ground and I really prepped the gardens really well this year. I might build another one. Um, yeah, so we'll definitely get into some gardening. I've been reading a lot of books this winter about gardening, so I'm hoping to, it's something that I really, really did enjoy. What's your dream job? I kind of answered that, the idea of like doing something with homes and decor and making people fall in love with their spaces and having that creative outlet, I think would be really great. Where do you get your, most of your design inspiration? 
I am not a Pinterest person. I literally get an idea in my head and then I just go for it. So I think I have, like for my pantry, I love the dark color. If you'll see, there's like a vintage print there and a mirror layered. So that's where that idea came from. And I loved this style of like cubbies. And I love the idea of like this one continuous color throughout. So that was an inspiration. And then I really also loved this one. They're hard to see right now. Uh, I love the woven baskets against the dark pantry. And I like that they use baskets to conceal like labels that you don't want to see all the time. And it just looked really clean. So that's kind of where the inspiration came. And then I kind of merged those ideas, thought about how it would look good in my home, and then kind of landed where I landed. And then, and then really thought about like, how can I do this in a way that would be accessible to people? And then I was like, oh, those cubes would be perfect if I can paint them and then build them up in a way that they no longer look like that and encase them. And it just kind of took from there and I did a bunch of sketches and that's what I landed on. And I'm really, really happy with it. All right, let's do a couple more and then we'll save some for tomorrow and there's a bunch that I haven't even checked yet. What are my three favorite things I purchased this year? Well, one that I really enjoy only because Steven really enjoys it is for our anniversary. I got him the Oculus <laughs> virtual reality glasses game thing. And he really enjoys like traveling to different places and like exploring maps. And I got to go to a Kelly Clarkson <laughs> concert. I think that was like a really cool purchase and something that we normally wouldn't buy. So I think that was a great purchase this year. I haven't really made huge purchases of anything. I think when the channel started, I did so many luxury shops and bought so many like Louis Vuitton things. And I just kind of like, that's not been important to me. I would rather put money into like things around my house. Uh, I've made no big luxury purchase this year as far as like a bag or wallet or anything. I think in those ways I've grown up a lot and like those things aren't as important. I mean, I buy a lot of decorations, but like that's really important to me. Um, yeah, I think the Oculus thing was a really good purchase. I'm trying to think of big purchases we made this year. Our, di our new dining room set was a big purchase from our house and I really love it. I love that I feel like I can mix a lot of styles with it. I love the tone of wood. I love the marble top buffet with all the additional storage. I'd say that would be a top purchase. Um, and third. I can't think of a third. I'd say the dining room was like one that I'm really, really happy with. The Oculus, just because I Steven really enjoys it and gets a kick out of it. Um, and it was something that he was so unexpected. I really can't think of a third purchase. I'm sure you've been asked this, but why is your first name spelled differently on Instagram? The reason is, is because to put Christopher Allen or even Christopher came with such insane amounts of letters and numbers. I could not find a combination that was simple and not used. So that's why I took the H out so I could simplify the letters and numbers at the end because it was insane. I tried Christopher Allen so many times and so many like smaller strands of numbers and it was ridiculous. And it would have been so hard to type in. So I did end up going without the H just to try to simplify it and streamline it a little bit. But that's why. Uh, and also it was already my Gmail account. I know it's not convenient, but hey, so, Still have gotten a decent amount of followers to come over and follow along. Uh, we'll hold on to the other questions um, for later tomorrow, but I'm gonna get off here and unwind a little bit. It's 2.30, I might even edit this up until this point so I can throw in the other footage once we get it. All right, friends. Oh my goodness, friends. So I was just editing the vlog. It is like 35 minutes. So I'm gonna actually end it there because I think it was a fun one. 
Um, and I'm gonna end this like I end all of them. Take care of yourself, take care of others, and be kind. Kindness is free, give it to everyone. Until next time, my friends, which will be tomorrow. Bye-bye.